Containment is one of the essential objectives of the authority, ensuring that RPCs are properly secured with specifications to their containment and are categorized into their appropriate classifications. However, when said specifications are not met or misplaced them into the wrong category, chances are the RPC will most likely breach from containment. This is why organizations require the utmost delicate process of understanding and classifying any discovered anomaly into their appropriate classes. If you were a buddy of a researcher, patting their shoulder as if nothing had happened, and telling them it's okay to make mistakes, well, if you are one of those people, you and I need to have a little chat about minor mistakes and being responsible for a containment breach and mass casualties. Whilst we are the employees of a secretive non-governmental organization that research, protects, and contains anomalies subject to infallibility, making mistakes should be avoided at all costs. But incompetence is a story for another time, so let's talk about the object classes of the RPC Authority. Oh, I've got a bit of a Heinz ketchup on me. <laughs> Sorry, give me one second. <clears throat> there we go. How object classes work in the Authority is through trial and error. More specifically, evaluations and assessments, including psychological assessments if the anomaly in question is humanoid. Once the relevant departments carry out their duties and finalize an assessment, they give an object classification based on their properties and containment difficulty. The object class in question consists of two classifications with a primary class consisting of a containment rating and a threat rating, followed by a secondary class being a supplementary. The containment rating is comprised of Alpha, Beta, Gamma, and Omega. Let's start off with Alpha rating. Alpha ratings are designated for anomalies that are contained with minimal difficulty or are easily contained without pooling in large resources. This is mainly due to an extensive research and understanding of how an anomaly functions. It's important to note that alpha rated anomalies usually require a specific set of conditions in order to manifest, which allows containment teams to safely store them without activating them. An example of an alpha rated anomaly is RPC-006, a sentient leather wallet that becomes aggressive whenever there is an amount less than $100 stored within. To contain this, RPC-006 is contained in a storage locker with a minimum of $100 stored within at all times. Up next is beta rating. Beta ratings are designated for anomalies that are difficult to a degree or unpredictable whilst in containment. Unlike alpha rating, beta rated anomalies are not understood to their full extent, such as the lack of understanding to the, of their properties, functionality, and behavior that manifest in unexpected ways. Beta rating makes up almost the majority of RPC classifications due to the aforementioned reasons above, but also per procedure to temporarily assign acquired anomalies as a means of further study and appropriate reclassification later on. Interestingly, for anomalies that show sentience, sapience, or autonomy, they are classified under beta rating regardless of other characteristics due to their quote, inherent unpredictability. An example of a beta rating anomaly is RPC-405, a sapient artificial intelligence that can self-replicate on computers within a 5 meter radius through unknown means. For archival and containment purposes, RPC-405 is to be kept in an isolated terminal and not connected to the internet. Up next, Gamma Rating. Gamma Ratings are designated for anomalies that are very difficult to contain. Gamma Rating is reserved for anomalies that don't adhere to consistent containment measures, which means that containment for this specific classification requires complex and expensive containment procedures. In addition, Gamma Rating anomalies require immense resources and manpower allocated to ensure its frequent and consistent containment measures. Most of what we can understand about gamma-rated anomalies is that their behavior is generally beyond our understanding, which contributes to the complexity of applied containment. An example of a gamma-rated anomaly is RPC-042, a sapient humanoid entity that becomes aggressive when exposed to sounds produced at above 20 decibels. To prevent any accidental breaches, RPC-042 was contained in a specialized chamber that controlled the sound waves produced within the room. And lastly, Omega Rating. Omega Ratings are designated for anomalies that consider containment protocols unreliable or are essentially uncontainable. Containment protocols for Omega Rating anomalies are primarily focused on preventing the spread of information, and generally are the types that threaten normalcy and operational security. An example of an Omega Rating anomaly is RPC-361, a phenomenon that specifically targets Han Chinese performers that mimic animal or non-human creatures through the use of costumes. 
As physical containment is impractical due to its nature, a collaboration between authority agents of the Hong Kong Special Autonomous Region government are deployed as means of containing RPC-361 via participation in public events and neutralize RPC-361-1 instances through non-lethal means. If you're confused or can't comprehend, think of these object classes in a sort of spectrum. Left is easy to contain, but as you go further to the right side of that spectrum, it becomes generally difficult or almost impossible to contain. Let's number each of these from 1 to 4. Number 1 is easy to contain, which is alpha. Number 2 is difficult to contain, which is beta. Number 3 is very difficult to contain, which is gamma. And finally, number 4 is impossible to contain, which is omega. You may have noticed that throughout explaining the containment rating, I haven't mentioned how a dangerous or threatening anomaly is taken into consideration when assessing its containment difficulty. In fact, the dangerous nature of an anomaly has no bearing on a containment rating. The only thing that is taken into consideration when classifying an anomaly is their trigger or means of activating their anomalous properties. For instance, if there was an anomaly that is known to cause death upon contact but only does so when a person has a, let's say a tie, they will only be activated under that circumstance. So containment procedures in this case would only prohibit personnel who wear a tie from being in its proximity. So, any and all dangerous effects are not considered under the containment rating, but rather a separate classification known as the lethality rating. This rating is specifically classifying anomalies on their ability to threaten human life. Rather than representing the lethality rating with a symbol like the containment rating, this uses a color discriminator to indicate its dangerous nature. There are six colors within the lethality rating which is listed as follows. White, yellow, orange, red, purple, and black. In this case, rather than containment difficulty, it's the level of an RPC's lethality. The lower it is, the friendlier it becomes. But the higher it is, the more dangerous it becomes. Now let's go over what each of the color discriminators of the lethality rating means. Starting from the bottom, the white rating. White rated anomalies are noted to be harmless under this classification and are often safe to be in contact with. However, this does not mean the anomaly is 100% safe as it may manifest hazardous effects that aren't pertinent to causing deaths. Always remember that just because it is a white rated anomaly does not automatically mean its properties are neutralized. Next is yellow rating. Yellow rating anomalies are situational and are easily avoidable from activating their anomalous properties. They are capable of causing lethal conditions, but are well understood or documented enough to avoid such occurrences, though anomalies with severe hazard effects are applied to this rating. After that, we have orange rating. Orange rated anomalies are capable of causing deaths, but do not reveal or display their capability. This is the lethality rating where most anomalies initially acquisition are classified under due to a lot of things that we don't know about. Next, the red rating. Red rated anomalies are actively lethal to any person and other life forms when directly interacting or being in proximity and present constant danger. After that, the purple rating. Purple rated anomalies are not only actively lethal, but are capable of causing in mass casualties and extermination of entire populations. They're far more dangerous than the previous lethality ratings as their properties and effects are severe enough to potentially wipe out an entire nation. And lastly, the black rating. Black rating anomalies are considered the most active threat to not only the existence of the authority but to the rest of the world. They are anomalies that are capable of causing the extinction of all life forms within this planet but may be extended to the entire universe. Due to their concerning capability, the Authority prioritizes much of its resources in containing black rated anomalies as much as they can. Those were the containment rating and the lethality rating, but what does it exactly mean for it as an object class? These two ratings, as explained, are actually an amalgamation, which means that they are combined to create the object class. For example, alpha rating and yellow rating are combined to make alpha yellow which means that the anomaly is easy to contain, but is situationally lethal. Let's try another example. Gamma rating and white rating are combined to make gamma white, which means that the anomaly is very difficult to contain, but is harmless. You can try as many combinations as you want with this system, as it creates a diverse multi-optional tool that allows any researcher like myself to understand an anomaly at first glimpse. The amalgamation of these two ratings is what makes the authority far more efficient in terms of determining anomalies' containment difficulty and lethality. However, there is much more to it than just these two ratings. Both of these ratings are categorized under the primary classification. 
If there's a primary, then you should know there's a secondary. The secondary classification is essentially a supplementary to the primary, which means there's a sort of additional information to the already amalgamated object class. They contain important information concerning the status of the anomaly and goes as follows. Explained, are anomalies who are fully understood scientifically or reproducible by the authority and are technically no longer classified as an anomaly. Neutralized, or NT, are anomalies that have their properties become or have been made inert. And utility, or UT, are anomalies that are used by the authority for various purposes, though mainly used for containment of or protection from other anomalies. One interesting to note about the utility is that it was previously categorized under the containment rating named Theta. However, due to the vague nature as a containment rating, i.e. determining the difficulty of a containment, it's been repurposed as a supplementary rating under the secondary classification. How secondary classes work is simply added onto the primary class. For example, you'd have your object class, let's say Beta Orange, which is then prefixed with a bracket and the acronym of one of the three aforementioned supplementary classes. If we were to use Utility or UT in this case, it'd be classified as Beta Orange UT. In English, it would be difficult to contain, capable of lethality but not guaranteed to display it, and is used by the authority for containment or protection purposes from other anomalies. With just two words and an acronym, we've established the basics of a working classification system that tells us a lot of things about an anomaly. I could have done a comparison video of the SCP's object class, but nah, I totally won't do something like that anyway. But speaking of SCP, I want to see in the comments below of you guys of using the RPC object class into an SCP. For me personally, SCP-682 would be Gamma Purple, very difficult to contain and capable of wiping out an entire population. Another one would be SCP-173, which would be Alpha Red, Thermic thinks it's Beta Red, uh, <laughs> but, Alpha, but Alpha Red in this case, which is easy to contain and actively lethal. So yeah, I want to see you guys in the comments below what SCP you think would be, you know, under this RPC classification. And until then, see you next time.